Hello. All right, we are live. Our first We Animals Media photo critique. Um, I would love to know who is here. You are welcome to uh, say hello in the comments section, uh, chat in where you're calling in from. Uh, great. Oh, Fantastic. Good to see you, Sabine. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll give you, hey, good to see you. Andrew Scaron's here. Kelly, great. Oh, hello. <laughs> Krista, wow. Fantastic. Wonderful. Oh, Wonderful. All these superstars that I love Absolutely. working with. Absolutely, yeah. Timo, hey, hey, good night, night. We are from Paris, Stefano. We are thrilled oh, to Stefano. have you here. As you're saying hello, uh, I will say that um, you sent in some fantastic submissions and it was really hard to pick only a few. Um, we have 90 minutes and I think we're, we're going to try not to blow through that and just you know keep to the 90 minutes. <clears throat> We've prepared well. We have a lot to say about a lot of the work that's come in. Um, I'm going to give a little brief intro about uh, why we're doing a photo critique, how we're doing a photo critique, how to receive a photo critique. However, uh, I also want to give Keith the floor for a minute. Um, we brought in Keith because he's, um, if you don't mind my saying Keith, like just a superstar in the photo world when it comes to knowledge and jurying and uh, thinking about writing about uh, photography. He's also my co-editor on the book Hidden, which many of you are in. I'm really thrilled that Keith is joining us on this critique because he brings incredible insight to looking at and analyzing images. Keith, do you want to take a, a minute to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi there. Um, yes. Um, yeah, it's it's a great pleasure to be here to critique, especially the first one for what first of what I'm sure will be many. And um, I'd just like to say, you know, I, I've looked at all the photos that um, that have been selected and uh, very impressed. There's some great photography there, great stories, because uh, I'm very impressed, obviously, with um, the work that you do. It's very special work. It's animal photojournalism. And, um, you know, you, you, you guys are doing all the all the creative work that's needed to bring these stories and issues to light through your photography. So anything that we can say, uh, which will help to uh, make things easier and improve things for you in the future, we're, we're here to help. Uh, great. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. And uh, that's a good intro into why we're doing this. Um, I just want you to know a little bit about, about Keith. Um, this is his 40th year um, working in photojournalism. Uh, he has launched several magazines in the UK, including Outdoor Photography and Black and White Photography and Wild Planet. Um, he's collaborated with many nature and documentary photographers on their books. Uh, he's written, edited, and co-edited 14 books in the last 10 years. Can you imagine? So good, um, including Hidden, of course. Um, he's also a jurist. He has served on several juries over the, over the last couple decades, and that's also why we are so lucky to have his expertise uh, and laser focus on our work today. Now, a little bit about uh, photo critiques. Um, Number one thing is don't take what we're going to say personally. It's about your work. It's not about you. Uh, I've been critiqued many times and I also find it difficult. It's really hard to extract yourself. Um, we know how much you put into your work. We know the lengths you go to. We know how you labor over the creation of the work and the editing of the work. Uh, we understand these things and we are here to critique the work to make you better photographers, not to crush you into the ground. You may feel crushed into the ground, but just work through that. That's that's the part, that's yeah. like how it goes. Um, I'm nicer than that, Joe. <laughs> we're actually very nice, <laughs> we're very nice. But um, you know, some, people, some cr critics are really difficult. The best critique I ever had was with Larry Towell. He's a Magnum photographer. He gave me hours of his time. I uh, felt like a shell of my former self afterwards, but that critique helped my work to this day. And that was about 15 years ago. Um, he ripped up what I was doing, asked me really hard questions about why I was doing it. And uh, that's what you're getting into when you're getting into a creek, uh, critique. Uh, we need to detach ourselves from our work in order to see it 
more clearly, I will say. So this is a practice in that. Um, our opinions are educated opinions, but they are still opinions. I think especially in photojournalism, uh, things are just so full of movement and emotion as opposed to other kinds of photography. So that's why I also want to say like these are opinions, you know, based on the, the history of photojournalism, um, but nevertheless educated ones. Um, because I uh, jury critique and act as a photo editor. It doesn't mean that my work is better than everyone else's. It is truly not. When I'm critiquing the work of others, I'm getting critiqued as well. I'm, um, I'm guilty of the things that I am saying to you. So I want you to take that into consideration. You will go to my work and look at my work and think, well, I don't know, she said this, but like she does that too. Yes, I do. <laughs> we are all a work in progress. Um, and most of us, you know, throughout our careers will continue to uh, make really poor choices and uh, do subpar work. Um, <laughs> and that's actually why we didn't pick in here like the best images that were submitted to this critique. We picked a variety of images to show, you know, what is like really fantastic, but what also can be improved. Of course, I guess that goes without saying. Uh, I'm just gonna wrap up. I have more here. I'm gonna wrap it up though by saying, um, I know we're all here because we want to make the world better for animals. That's why we do this work. And I want to acknowledge that as well. And it kind of makes the critiques even more important. Uh, dare I say even more important than critiquing like commercial work, for example, because we're, we're really like trying to change the world. And that's also why I'm happy to be here with Keith giving this critique. And, um, and uh, I recently read about the three C's of photojournalism. And I wanted to say that here to you as well. Uh, you know, that we are here as photojournalists to be curious, courageous, and compassionate. And mm. I salute you all for doing this work and for being those things and wanting to elevate uh, your work. Uh, then, lastly, I haven't given Keith, a, you know, a space to have anything here. One more thing, Keith, right. I'll give, you, give you the floor for a moment. Um, so how these critiques go, um, it'll go something like this. We'll describe what we see in the pictures. We'll analyze how the photo was made. We'll interpret what it communicates and we'll evaluate it usefully, positively uh, on all aspects, including technical and artistic and feeling. Uh, and then uh, I'll give Keith a moment if he wants to add to that and we will jump in. We're gonna look at the single images and then we're gonna look at the stories. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, I would just add to that is um, I think critiquing any picture, it's, it is going to be um, a pretty immediate response because that's the reality. When people look at your pictures, they're engaging like in a second or less and reacting, you know, forming an opinion or an emotion about what they see in front of you. And in effect, that's what, you know, Joanna and I are doing with, with your photographs, but also we're going a little bit deeper, of course, uh, which is why the caption information, the synopsis and the background as to what the situation was that you were in is, is important to us uh, because obviously no scenario, particularly in photojournalism, is, is perfect where, you know, you've got perfect lighting, perfect access or anything like that. There's lots of obstacles in the way. And so we do want you to know that, you know, we, we are taking that into account and, you um, you know, it's uh, it, but you know that's the nature of photojournalism. It's uh, it's never easy. It's usually uh, a, a situation that you're not supposed to be in, and that you're um, actually you know at the at the front line of um, of what is in this, in essence conflict photography, but not conflict photography as the general public knows it. Um, so yeah, though you know we're taking all of that um, into account, the whole context of it. And um, so, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm ready to get cracking. <laughs> let's get cracking, and let's see how many Aussieisms you can include in this hour and a half. <laughs> oh, is that is that, is that the mini contest? Is it get right? Cracking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay we're going to start uh, screen sharing here, and you're looking at my Lightroom, and uh, this is from Andrew Scaron in Poland, who's been a photojournalist for 20 years who has been uh, focusing on animals, uh, has been an APJ for about 10 years. 
And um, he, he briefly says about um, this photo, it was taken a few years ago. I am not happy with it. The image of this child has been coming back to haunt me for years. I wonder how else I could have photographed the situation. I am missing the point. Uh, one of it's one of the most painful pictures that torments his head. I totally understand you and feel for you. Um, Keith, maybe uh, do you want to jump in on this one first? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'm quite familiar with this photo because we did use it or a version of it, I should say, in Hidden. Um, because obviously, what you see here is the full frame, and what appears in Hidden ha has been cropped, and obviously, there's been some work done in post production to really, um, you know, just not back that background you know you can see that outside the light is incredibly bright and it's finding its way in at the back and at the sides there's not a lot you can do about that and, not, and that light's being reflected by that pool of water in, in the uh, to the side of um, where the girl is uh, standing as well so you know it's there it's not an night lighting wise it's not an ideal scenario but never mind the 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 point is i i re I, I really like this photograph simply because of this surreal scenario, uh, and I can see why it, she still causes you nightmares, Andrew. Um, that you know, I, I just find this picture it's working on so many levels. In that, you know, yes, you've got the obvious hideousness of uh, of a slaughterhouse and the pigs' heads lying around. So we already know what abuse and horrors of the animals have suffered. But then this is also this little girl's playground which, you know, is just makes me wonder what she going to grow up to be like, uh, you know, let's call in the social services, surely. But what we do find out from what Andrew has told us, um, you know, in his caption and other background information is that she's the daughter of, me, uh, of a Myanmar refugee family and they work and live in this slaughterhouse in Thailand. So there are so many stories going on at different layers here. Um, in this photograph, which makes it a, a powerful piece of photojournalism. Um, and um, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I had no, when I saw this, I had absolutely no hesitation in including it uh, in, in uh, Hidden. Uh, it, <laughs> I love it when Keith and I disagree. And I think that makes, <laughs> things, that makes things more interesting. So, I mean, generally, um, I am, uh, yeah, keep it moving, we will. Um, I, you know, initially was not a huge fan of this picture. Uh, it's very busy. My eyes go all over the place. I see there's a central character, um, but I'm distracted by the overexposure. I'm distracted um, by why was it taken in this way? Uh, here's the crop that we used in Hidden. It's more or less this. Uh, I, I really like this crop because it gets rid of what I find to be quite extraneous all on the right side. And then we get to look at, wow, like those heads are almost, uh, those pig heads are like as, as haphazard as like the, the streams of, of tar up on the side. And um, what I would want from this image is more focus in the writing on the child. Uh, we know that story about the child because we know about the full story, uh, but people won't. Um, and then once it's closer, you get into so many details, like these bodies in the background. I think you lose sight of those bodies. You don't really see them unless there is a crop. And um, anyway, we're going to move on to the next image. <laughs> uh, we're getting kept on track here. Um, so this one, maybe I'll, I'll lead on this one. Uh, this is also by the same photographer, Andrew. And um, he had to shoot this while leaning over a fence, which tells me, you know, his arms were like this and he had to shoot what was in front of him and he didn't have room to move around. I've been to this farm, I think. Um, I know what that fence is like. And I think it's an important picture because it's about speciesism. Um, we have a similar image with, uh, we'll get to. Um, so how fantastic to see this proud cat who is free, uh, domesticated cats we love, and then this similar fur bearer right below the cat. Uh, but this 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 fox is cowed. You know, the, the this stance is not proud. Um, the head is hanging low. We see the cages. We see all these constructs. But what for me does not make this a good image is that uh, stuff on the left. Of course, you know, had the photographer been able to move around, they would have uh, tried to avoid uh, the stuff that's on the left. So I did this crop. I'm not sure that it's a better crop. 
Uh, I tried though. So I'm a big, big fan of cropping. Uh, not everyone is, if, especially if you're a purist, but uh, that's what I did with this image. I brought it to this. Uh, Keith, what's your take on this image? Yeah, I mean, you've pretty much answered all of the um, issues that I have um, about this picture, and which are down to obviously one of um, aspect and you know the uh, van the vantage that andrew had or didn't have because obviously you know he was out looking over a fence so he was restricted in terms of what he could do and um yeah i i yeah i i think actually uh, but then what you can do in this situation is and i think it, i would like to have seen if the, he took a, a vertical version of it you know a portrait version because the the interest is those two animals you know the cat and the fox below the other foxes in the background are really sort of secondary they're almost peripheral um we get the picture that you know the juxtaposition here of a cat proud and free and the fox you know trapped caged and and cowed um so you know as kappa said you know um was it kappa or oh, one of them said if your pictures aren't good enough you're not close enough and th this is a case in point you know a longer lens might have helped uh in order to do that um but yeah that that's really all i have to say on that I was happy to see the submission because uh, it reminded me of one of my images and mm -hmm. um, it's the only image of mine that I've included here, but it's, you know, the same thing happening. It's in a pig farm. This to me is not a successful image because the piglet is in focus and the cat is not. Uh, the cat needs to be in focus. Um, Correct. The cat was like just there for a moment. I did what I could. I did shoot vertically, uh, but Keith had this one thing to point out about the picture. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, you cut the cat's tail off. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying that firmly with my tongue in my cheek, but I, you know, this, this is it. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if that cat's tail had just curled back into frame? Um, you know, uh, but yeah, of course I'm being really uh, pedantic here but the main thing is yes ideally both animals should be in focus but otherwise you know the you know the framing the composition the way one animal balances out the other as well compositionally and also again just like in the previous picture that little piglet you know that you, you can see doesn't look happy doesn't look you know does not like it so it, its position in life right now and whereas the cat is completely relaxed and comfortable i'm sort of asking myself you know what is it with um you know pig farms and, and pet cats um the, there's probably some sort of psychological um uh thing here that probably needs to be explored a bit more yeah there are always dogs and cats at, at farms yeah <laughs> yeah um now yeah, moving on to this quite extraordinary image um and this was photographed i'm not okay so not by name uh annie pixels in india mm -hmm. uh who's been a photographer for six years and feels that they have uh, zero experience in apj um i would say that they've been photographing animals for several years now um keith why don't you start yeah when I first saw this picture, believe it or not, I did not see the foot, right? My first glance, I just saw a pile of feathers and blood, you know, in the in the top left-hand corner there, and these chickens in the bottom right. So, and so I immediately thought, oh, gosh. And then it wasn't until a few seconds later I said, oh, hang on, that's a foot. It's not just a, a black mass. So, um, so I'm sort of, that just got me wondering in that I'm thinking, well, yeah we've, there's a lot of all the right elements are there and the, and where their position is but at the same time it's not ideal because my my eye shouldn't be playing that trick on me because ultimately the the center the central focal point of this picture is actually the foot or it should be the foot but for some reason whether it's one of the shooting position of the photographer the angle or maybe uh, the exposure i i'm not sure um but you can see also that technically and i don't like to get too technical in critiques um particularly in in pictures in photojournalism where as i said earlier circumstances aren't necessarily ideal but you know the chicken in the foreground is um is out of focus and there's a blurred <coughs> pardon me there's something in the bottom left hand corner there that is you know just distracting so my eyes not really first it's not finding the foot and it's not resting on the foot so you know, compositionally, perspective, 
it's yeah it could have been a great picture but unfortunately i don't think it is mm. uh first of all uh, i commend the lighting and the quality of the color the photo editing i find this image unique and exceptional um i also did not find the foot immediately what i found that was my eyes did a sweep around uh yep. taking in the exposure and the color then i landed on the birds in the foreground who are watching something and then i look at what the birds are watching and then i see the one bird and i'm focused on the toes and the head and this one bird who is dead eyes closed and Minutes later, as I was writing about the picture, I see the bird who is sort of being killed, blood gushing out of their face. And um, and then I'm just amazed that I have not yet seen that. And the foot is awkward. It's almost like a disembodied leg. It's very strange. Um, yeah. I also questioned the the crop. So I cropped it a little bit. And I don't know if that's a better crop. So here's the original. Here's the crop. So we get rid of a bit mm. of that bottom left. And uh, moving on, because we're being told to move on. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start with this one. So um, I really like the movement. Uh, I want to focus on that in this picture. Um, it's sharp enough. Uh, there's a bit of sharpness in eyes and toes, and there's movement. And I like that because things are moving. Everything about this, you know, the, the trucks and the busyness and the birds. So I really appreciate the movement. I like that this image draws me and I go into the first four birds who we see. And then I see all the other birds and beaks stuffed into this circle of birds. Then I see the one on the left crying out. I see a bird flying in the background. Uh, I commend the photographer the exposure as well because the sky is not blown out and you have the details in the birds. Um, and it's a very busy image, but I don't mind that. I thought about that a lot and I, and I don't mind it. Uh, Keith, what do you want to say about this? Not a lot more to add. I, I think it's uh, terrific. I think obviously the, you know, the thing that really works is this really low viewpoint. You know, it's an unusual angle. It's not how people would see this if yes. this was happening in front of them, you know, and, uh, and, the, and using the ultra wide angle lens and getting, you know, you're obviously the, the you know, the, the subject to lens distance is obviously not great. So the photographer's right there. And as a result of this viewpoint, you know, you are taken right into those birds and can immediately engage with them and their emotions. And as you say, the, you know, that one on the left where, you know, it's squawking and yeah, this is a scene of distress. And um, yeah, I, I can see some photographers would be tempted to almost like uh, clone out the, the blurred bird in the sky in the background. And I always say, no, don't because that adds depth it adds a little bit of information it tell and as joe said right at the beginning there you know it, it just emphasizes that this is a moving scene it's a, quite a dynamic scene so the photographer's done very well to get this moment at exactly the right time right exposure and you know just seeing that guy on the, on the left as well is, is oh interesting is the guy is the only ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's just a shoulder. But the point is, again, it just adds authenticity to the fact that this is a this is actually a busy scene. Hmm. And by the same photographer, uh, Keith, go ahead. Yeah, I think this this is terrific. You know, obviously, okay, things aren't moving here, um, and it's the perfect composition in terms of just getting a portrait of uh, of a hen that's in the cage and uh, and there's just enough information in the background that all these other birds um are also you know stuffed in their cages off to market and um so you know the information is there that um you you know what's happening here it's uh birds going off to market to obviously to be bought and slaughtered and the rest of it so it's um it's a good um you know in terms of a a story it, it's it's probably a good if, if the story was going on to say, well, what happens to chickens, you know, after they're sold at market, and um, this would be almost be a good opener, a good starting reference placement picture, as we call it. And um, yeah, it's got all the right framing and elements there. Uh, for me, this is like a quintessentially uh, animal photojournalism type of shot. And I mm. really like it because you connect with an individual, there's eye contact, and there's context. It's yeah. uh, some images need explanation 
and a, a good caption, and this does not. Uh, one critique I have of it is I feel like it's a little bit uh, saturated. So I'm not sure if the photographer pulled up saturation or pulled up the contrast a little bit too much. But um, for me, I'm a distracted by like the contrast and coloration there. The green in the middle is really high. I might have pulled that down a little bit. Uh, other than that, though, a really excellent image. Keith, mm. go ahead. I love this. I really do. Um, and you might say, why? Well, I just sort of, it. you know, the thing is, when I look at photographs, it doesn't matter if it's photojournalism or formal portraiture or, or what, you know, I it's a, a big element for me of what I look for or what I respond to, I suppose, is is composition. And in this sort of in this scene, you've got all the compositional elements, you've got all these grid lines, you know, in terms of the bars, horizontal as well as vertical. And so that creates sort of like a, a viewing dynamic for you in that. You know, you're you 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 are you can see it's almost like you're you're falling into the picture from on high, and um, I also like uh, so there's a lot of geometry going on as well because I also like the way the, the the pigs are sort of you almost have the the what is the longest or the biggest pig at the top and then they're sort of like in a descending order down to the the smallest thinnest at the bottom, so there's so many um, graphical qualities to this photograph, and uh, obviously yeah you know it's an intensive pig farm but then what really makes it you know sinister and disturbing for me is those purple spray marks some of which almost look like incisions which is almost like it's foretelling what is to come it's like it, you know it's so there's a metaphor there's a visual metaphor here for for these pigs and what's going to happen to them super well executed uh it's impressive that the lighting is so good considering the conditions mm. it looks like there's an led light being held by someone in front of their faces yeah. it's yeah, yeah. really well done and you manage to get the details in the grates at the back like come on that's really 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 good to me this mm. looks like a work of art and yeah. it's inviting for that reason it looks like some like you know could be on the wall of some something hinted in the 1800s and it's inviting because of how it looks like a work of art. And it though it's horrific, it allows you to stay and it asks questions. Why 45, why purple, why green, uh, why that space? Why are they skinny? Some of these animals look skinny to me. And something that really stood out for me is the reflection in the dirty water. Uh, it might just be an overhead light, but it could also be, you know, there could be a skylight up there and you're seeing a tinge of blue sky. Mm. Either way, that's what it evokes for me. Um, one critique of this image is the caption, which is kind of like a non-caption. <laughs> uh, we did read all of your captions and, and descriptions, and um, we really want to know a little bit more uh, from, from you about, about what's going on here. Uh, okay, to the next image. Keith. Oh, yeah. This is... Um... This is fabulous. Do you remember though? I mean, I don't know how much art you, I, I, I do commend every, um, or recommend, I should say, every photographer also looks at the great masters, you know, the Renaissance artists, the Dutch masters, uh, uh, because, you know, the way they use light in portraiture and this, in another world, in another time, this is sort of like, to me, the same, I, I could be looking at uh, an aristocratic group family painting uh, from the Renaissance period. And um, but of course, here we have, you know, it's a group study of pigs that clearly are not happy with their predicament. Um, but it is nonetheless, even in pictures where, you know, that so often you're photographing, whether it's intensive far uh, factory farms or slaughterhouses, you know, and the, the hideous scenes, you can still find artistry in your photography and in the way you capture these scenes. And if you see artistry, yes, use it. Uh, and this has been used, the lighting and the composition here ha it is very artistic. And I think that adds something to to the photograph. And uh, I, I find that, you know, very enriching. It doesn't mean I'm ignoring, obviously, the hard facts of, of what is being told uh, to me, you know, in, in front of my eyes. But I just think, you know, if you, if you are able to add some some artistry in your, in your lighting and exposure and the composition, then yes, do it. 
this image for me initially was too busy, but then I came around to feeling that the busyness was, of course, the point. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that the pigs are reacting to a human. That seems obvious to me. It seems to me that that's why they're crowded away in a corner. And it's an indication of how animals and farms react to us because they're afraid of us. Um, I really appreciate the central focus is the central pig with that eye in focus, but I can't get beyond the fact that the other faces, which are so are important, are, are a little bit out of focus. Um, but nevertheless, you know, this is an image that gives you pause. You kind of don't want to scroll away from it immediately. The more you look at it, the more horrific it becomes, uh, their yeah, filth, yeah. the number of scratches and scrapes and injuries that they have is, is, um, is really shocking. Um, what else did I write? Um, yeah, I was th imagining this image shot with F-16, which I know is very difficult in a <laughs> place like this in the darkness with the lighting. Uh, nevertheless, for me, this would be a perfect, a much a much better picture if uh, if it was shot either at like f 1.4 or like f 16 maybe 1.4 would not do it either so uh that's what's coming to mind for me but i really like um not only the busyness of everything that's happening on their bodies but the busyness of back here you know the filth that's on the wall okay mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. image keith go ahead <laughs> Uh, this one. Oh, There's so know, much to um, say. <laughs> but we have oh, three minutes for both of us. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, look, um, don't be offended, Christo. Um, I love what you do. Um, this could have been so, so much better, um, and but so simply done in the, the information we have down the right-hand side where the background, I think, is that a car in the distance? Yeah. We could have cropped uh -huh. down the edge, the edge of the cage because that's the natural boundary for this picture. We don't. We don't really need to see, you know, what, what what's beyond the cage. Um, and also a slightly more elevated position. Again, I don't know the circumstances. Maybe this was the most, this was the best vantage point you could get, in which case, right, I appreciate what, what's going on. But they just, as a result, there just could have been more separation between the, the front paw and um, and this, I'm not sure what this object is. You see, this is what, it's almost like it's, it, it's, out, it's taking up too much of the frame. So, you know, if, if you're more elevated and, 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 and closer, maybe, a, you know, slightly longer focal length, then that um, bit of foreground information could have been reduced and, and be more peripheral and not distracting. So, you know, just two really simple things there. Um, and um, because, you know, in the background, you've got, you've got the other animals which are supplying the context. And uh, so, yeah, it's just... It's just framing and focal point. Um, sorry, framing and, and position that uh, have, have bothered me, you know, on this one. Yeah, um, there is this fantastic element of a fox looking at you, well exposed, mm. great sharpness. You have this fantastic element, but too much busyness happening. So what you're seeing in the foreground, Keith, I believe is enrichment, which you see in blue and orange in the uh, okay. So right. this concept of enrichment and what we give as enrichment is appalling, but the enrichment is we don't know we don't know that and so that could have been in the caption but also reframed christo i'd be really curious to see what images you shot before and after this it may be that you actually have the image but you need yeah. a photo editor to to look at it and, and pick it so yeah. what i'm yeah. thinking is this picture would be better if it was wider because then we have context for what's on the right. We have a little bit more of what's on the left and a little bit higher so that the foot and the enrichment are not being, are not interfering with, with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and is, is that Just it? And, uh, and also fantastic lighting. Did I say that already? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the lighting and exposure and focusing, there's no, no issue there. Uh, and, you know, just the eye contact at the moment is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, on to uh, Sabine's uh, image. Sabine. So much going on here. So much to say about this image. Uh, Sabine has eight years experience as a, photog as a photographer and eight years photographing animals as well. Um, I'll jump in and say, like, almost fantastic composition. I mean, almost 
perfect, really. Uh, how unusual. So I love how unusual this is. I love that the animals are being pulled up like through the apex of the roof. I love where the woman or man is positioned. I love these pathetic little tr scrawny little trees um, on either side. I'm very curious about those tumors. I want to know from the caption, like, why are they being picked up? Why do they have these tumors? Uh, what is going on? Uh, the caption doesn't quite give me enough information. The orange is distracting, but I'm not sure that you can do uh, much about that unless you s flip it to black and white or desaturate. But desaturating would be on nope. black and white. Uh, Keith we is, disagree. Keith is like, we... I mean, there. Wait, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I disagree with you on this one. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The I, I think it's fantastic. This. I mean, I agree with you on the composition because. Um, but I. I actually, it's high vis jackets. I mean, they've become the uniform of our dystopian age, haven't they? They're everywhere. Um, and it, it somehow seems almost appropriate that there's someone in high vis next to this really, you know, crazy scene. What and it could be a, an industrial or retail park, you know, that, that could be the roof of, you know, a branch of Ikea, I think, or something. Um, but if anything, just to make it just a little bit stronger, I would just would have taken this maybe a half step back so that the branches of that tree on the left aren't clipped. And you could just see a little bit more of the top of that contraption, which is holding the pigs, because it just it just sort of cuts off just a little bit too quickly. Yeah. Um, and as a result, you'd also therefore see a little bit more of the high vis jacket of, of the person in the foreground. And then I think it would be perfect yeah the the foot that's just grazing the person of course not in real life but in the picture <laughs> is a, a big distraction to me um and what else did i have there but i certainly i certainly oh. wouldn't convert it to black and white no okay um i also understand that you're shooting through a fence or over a fence and that mm -hmm. you know severely limits our abilities especially yeah. if we're on the fence like you know trying to balance i'm not sure if that was the case but um um, Vic mentioned maybe we can read the captions. Uh, Vic, good suggestion. We'll try to. It takes up time from the critique, so I maybe we'll uh, think about doing that in some more cases here. Uh, did I? Okay, Keith, go ahead. Oh, this is. I don't know what it is with Sabine and, and lighting, but I, this I just love this. Um, I know it's quite, it's strange, you know, just the, it looks like one hell of a contorted body, you know, it, it just doesn't look natural, does it? It's a kind of breed. Oh, man. So it's um, not, yeah. Yeah, but it's this, it's, again, it's this lighting. I, I think Sabine does go to, I mean, she she's from the Netherlands. I'm sure she goes to the Wright Museum and, has, and studies the Dutch masters because that lighting is there and it's terrific to my mind and i i like the way that there you can see another uh cow cow or bull i can't tell but that you know you can see another animal just in the background because again that show then shows you ah oh, this actually even though it looks unusual and quite weird in fact it's not um you know there, there's the it's important to have just enough background or surrounding information detailed information uh to add context to what we're seeing so it's it's got all the elements for me uh, this picture and the and the and the guy is just you know okay he's anonymous but there's just enough detail there in terms of his hands and what he's holding and his position and his relationship to the animal which obviously is you know is not uh it's certainly not a very personal relationship is it so i it's it's a it's a terrific photograph. Feel free to post comments. I know some of you have. I'm clicking over the comments sometimes to see what's there. Uh, you you said a lot of what I would say about this image. It looks like a movie set, and this looks like mm. a fake animal. The lighting is fantastic, but like you have to wonder where the how is this real? And you know, okay, this, this is not a movie set. This is you know on a street, and what the hell is going on? The cow looks subdued as though they've been through this a million times. Um, you know, a slow walk in the direction they're told. We yeah, see the right so. amount of the person. Uh, I've, what I find really interesting about the, the cows on the left 
is that they make this more about photojournalism and less about a staged picture. Like if they weren't mm. there providing that movement and that little bit of quote unquote imperfection, you'd think like this was a, a stage, you know, this is, this is uh, designed exactly, uh, well, losing my words here, but uh, it brings the photojournalism into it. And you're reminded like this is, this is happening out in the world. But it's also what I said earlier about the artistry. If you see artistry, whether it's in the lighting or the, or the, or the, in this case, quite, you know, the surreal location doesn't look like a farm, then yeah, exploit it. You know, it, it then helps to set your photograph apart from any others. I like the red pipe or the red line, uh, yeah, across the ground, and I like the little tag, the little red tag here on the jacket. There's yeah, some yeah. things that are complementary one to the other. Uh, I'd love to hear your point, your uh, thoughts on whether you like those cows uh, on the left or if you don't, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, next image. This is also by Sabine, who is quite a master of lighting. Uh, this is what comes out and comes to the fore in, in like, this is just classic Sabine lighting. Uh, something I really like uh, about this image is where this shadow is landing. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for us to work with shadows in animal photojournalism. There, there are there are bars and shadows all the time. We're in dark places. Um, they get in the way. Depending on where our lighting is, we can put the shadow in, in the wrong place because of how we're holding our lights. I like that you see a bit of the eye and also the eye is slightly in shadow as well. Um, one thing that I am wondering about and I haven't decided if I like or not is that the back here is in focus and the face is not. Um, I would love to see this image with the face in focus. Yep. I'd also love to see this perfect little detail down here. One piglet looking up at us, the only individual looking at us. Uh, I would love to see images on either side of this one. Did you get more of that face? If you had, I think that might be an even better picture. Yeah. Keith. Not much to add, really. Um, I'd like to sort of what you say about shadows and, you know, the predicament that so many um, animal photojournalists say, as you uh, find themselves, as you rightly say, in that, you know, you're shooting obviously in the dark, you're shooting and there's lots of cages, iron bars, fences. Um, so obviously, you know, shadows are going to be, a, frankly, they're going to be an, an element of just about every, every picture in, in those sorts of scenes. So you do some yes you have to be aware of where the shadows are falling but also don't forget that rather than being say a nuisance they can actually be be more of a part make them a part of your photograph and try oh, and ex yeah. exploit them and, and say well actually if i place if i move a little bit to the left or right or up a bit i can get that shadow in a in a, in a place that actually adds to this picture i um, love that because it's you know you look at these shadows they're, they're actually uh, they are lead in lines as well it's not just the bars um, but also that main shadow that's running across the full length of that pig's body. Um, if that shadow wasn't there, I don't think that picture would be as strong. You know, it wouldn't mm. be as dynamic in terms of taking you into the photograph from the front to the back. So you see the shadows as, as an element that you can use to your advantage. This is also by Sabine, and I consider this image more of like a, a quick document, which we need, uh, which campaigners need, which it's proof. It, it feels like a photo that uh, was taken a little bit quickly. Um, we need to see these stories. Um, I like that the, you know, we there's a low f-stop and we focus on that piglet who is rotting. Uh, it looks to me that this bin was covered and you lifted the tarp quickly, got a shot. Um, mm -hmm. the, the color palette isn't fantastic. It maybe some playing with the colors could have been interesting. Um, so while I feel like it's a necessary picture, uh, I'm not sure that it's like a, a winning picture. Keith? Yeah, I'm yeah, it, it, it's a grab picture, isn't it? I, I, I think you're probably right. I can only guess. And, you know, what, what I'm struggling with with this picture is that, yeah, that, you know, it, it's actually just trying to identify clearly as to what I'm looking at, what should I be looking at? You know, I mean, they're two different questions. Um, 
you know every in every scene you know what you're looking at but then the photographer's job is to is to say no well this is what i want you to look at and that's where the art of photography and particularly in photojournalism really comes to the fore because you are like um a film director is uh, in that you're going to decide what you want the viewer to see in in what is the scene in front of you and frankly you know in this picture the the only thing that's taking my eyes in terms of what i should be looking at is you know is 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 the head in the middle there but is it should i really be looking at is that really the strongest part of the scene and visually um i actually don't think it is because it's not it's not holding my attention um so and and maybe you know maybe you could do some work in post production to to help that um and maybe saturate the blue a bit more just to make it a bit more of a graphic exercise but maybe not you know it's um yeah i'd love to see the image shot directly from above so you only just see a circle like not even the bin uh mm. could be interesting but we have to move on and we are moving on to stefano balacci who uh -huh. um this is wow <laughs> well, there are a lot of wow images here. Uh, on a shrimp trawler, uh, a worker releasing turtle who was who was caught, so is considered bycatch. Now, like, what a moment that you captured! Congratulations on on capturing <laughs> that image in, in that moment. Um, also, Stefano, appreciate that you gave us a lot of context about what was going on, why you were there. You were with Sea Shepherd um endangered animals and so on like you really brought the image to life with the text i wish we had time to read it all um the turtle is sharp um well captured well framed so so fantastic the uh, timing is that. perfect it really is it is and the expression of the turtle and like is the turtle resigned what is the turtle going through how far is that drop for the turtle we don't know if they're gonna die from a long fall i can't quite get uh, you know, how far they have to go. The colors are striking. I like that mm. we have a lot of primary colors here and secondary, like bright red, bright yellow, bright green, blue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, um, I wondered if you had seen this unfolding, do you have like 50 images of this happening? Did you see him being untangled? That in itself would be like a, a 12 image story, perhaps um, yeah, the yeah. story on this trawler of this turtle. Um, or did you turn around and say, oh, my God, and like ca just catch it Snap. before the turtle yeah, went over? Yeah. If you were watching this unfold, I would have liked a different uh, angle. I would have liked to have seen you standing somewhere differently. I would have liked to have you closer to the action. Uh, I tried some crops to get closer to the action I, and I'm going to show them to you. I'm not convinced that they're good crops. So here's a little bit closer. Um, this green netting, like it was just driving me nuts. And and this thing, like what is, what is this little detail here? It was driving me nuts. So I thought, okay, well, let's try and get a little closer. Yeah, I think that might be a bit better. And then a little closer. Does that make it a better image? Uh, I'm not sure that it does. You miss out on the feel of the boat and the angle. Yeah, of the exactly, boat. exactly. And the, and those wonderful yellow boots um, yeah. because that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, okay, go uh, ahead, Keith. Uh, yeah, it's just. I, I mean, simply, I just. Yeah, it's not an easy one to crop because. Um, mm -hmm perhaps a little bit on on the left you know you, you you could but i i wouldn't crop it much because as a as you know there's lots of good primary colors there which are offsetting um you know, the, the 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 background and the, and the and the what's going on with the turtle um and you know it it, it tells you, you know, this is a fishing trawler if you crop too high you probably lose a little bit of that context so um it's just the timing you know you, you couldn't have waited any longer to you know one one second one half second you know and you you would have lost the turtle completely yeah uh, we're being told next image okay here we mm. have another image by stefano uh i believe keith and i have high praise uh for this image i really like that you're at ground level stefano this is yeah. really key when we're photographing animals to get nose to nose with them it conveys more of their experience and also you really get a feel for what it's like to be on that ground. You see the mulch, you see the dirtiness. Um, I really, really like this 
expression on the chicken, you capture that. And of course, with broilers, you know, they lose ability to use their legs because their bodies are so large. This animal just looks sad, tired, resigned. I love that. I think the f-stop is fantastic because you see the chicken in the background and you have enough detail to see that this animal has like so many broilers, the burns on the on the chest, like no feathers there because they're just lying in this ammonia all the time. Uh, great lighting as well. Like, uh, and congratulations on the excellent lighting, in fact, and the subdued tones. Um, this image offers a, a very strong point of focus, but uh, gives you the space to like roam around with your eyes yeah. and take in various details. I love that feather uh, on the bottom right. Uh, Keith, go ahead. Yeah, it's the, the composition is really effective. You know, I, I, I think it's been well thought out. I, I don't know how much time Stefano had to, to compose this, but it's really well balanced. And, and you know, there's nice, good shapes uh, within in the background because of the way um, you know there's just enough separation between the top of the of the uh, chicken's head and the and the, the the lights above there's just enough separation on the right between um, its claw and and uh, the the bird in the background so you know the, there's there is that face nothing is clashing or intruding um, the only thing I might say and even then it's not a huge bother for me is you know maybe um in the processing those lights could just be turned down a bit you know just dim slightly slightly not overdoing it because you know um just so it would then uh give more attention and uh to the head and eye of uh, of the subject there but that's a really small small thing and something I just can't let go of uh, is that I so wish that the lens had turned an inch to the right so we have like an inch less on the left and an inch more on the oh, okay. right, but I'm not even sure if I saw it, that that would make it a good picture. But uh, Stefano, I'm wondering <laughs> if you have that image. <clears throat> okay, this is a photograph by Suzanne Goodwin and um, Keith, go ahead, please, while I get my collect. Yeah, name. this, I mean, <laughs> it's quite, it's quite this is another strange setting isn't it that we the way we put animals you know way we keep animals um it almost could be a a cinema screen with you know mm. a bit of curtain fabric at the bottom there and you know, they curtains on i think or you know the paneling and and the room you just sort of, what, what is going on here um so yeah obviously i can see why the photograph was taken because there's this just again it's dystopian um there's so this and but i think it could have been better if it was taken more square on because ultimately i mean this is this is it i'm not sure what the subject is is it the you know the, the snake itself in the, this um i don't know tank or uh you know glass prison um, that was the yeah that was the word i was looking for or is it the whole the whole room um in which case i i'm not sure if um suzanne has actually made her mind up about this um in which case yeah it's it's probably um a, a good opportunity missed um or you know there could have been a chance to take two types of picture here Maybe mm. she had. She does have another one where she's closer to closer to the snake and more square on. Um, oh. Yeah, that, that, that's it, really. So if you have a number of these images, I would personally love to see what you shot there. It looks like you're in a space where maybe you had a bit of time. Uh, fantastic capture of the snake looking up and out. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Aspirational. This aspirational pose. Um, I, I would have loved to see more playing with the colors in the terrarium, maybe add a little more contrast, maybe uh, playing with that light in the top right, which I find a little bit distracting. Like I kind of go to and think, uh, could it be dim? Could it be bright? And could it be this and that? Um, I, I do really like that you saw that the door and showing the room was really important to this picture. I did give it a crop. I'm not sure it's a successful crop, but I'll show you what I did. <clears throat> so here's 
before I just cropped into, I felt like there was just a little bit too much extraneous space on the right. And so I did that again, not sure if it's better, um, but uh, here, just that might help a little bit there and there. I'll go back to dark gray. And what else did I say? Um, yeah, I just felt like the framing need a little bit of work and I was uh, excited to see what else you had shot there. Okay, on to the next image also by Suzanne. Keith and I agree that the reason for this image is the tongue. Uh, and we're gonna go on to a whole rodeo series later. Rodeos are very hard to shoot at. I'll go in, yeah, go into that later. But um, the reason for this image is the tongue uh, and all of the effing contraptions around <laughs> this poor animal's face. Yeah. Um, now, how do you get a better image of this? This feels like it's not an artistic image. It feels like it's a document of this terrible thing that happens. And again, those are important in animal photojournalism. Um, I also understand that at rodeos, you can't move around. You're in a crowd of people. Everything's moving quickly. Um, what I might have done is, like, did you get an image where the horse is moving forward and therefore uh, blocking out this very annoying sign, which is part of what ruins the image for me. Um, maybe a longer lens, tighter on the face, uh, maybe vertical. Um, yeah. Yeah. And these, you know, the background is quite distracting. Um, and yeah. yet, like, what an important picture. Look at, look at this. Like, look at all of these little spikes on this thing. Uh, mm. The over harnessing. Look at, and then I notice that there are plugs in the ears. Like, this is, this is absolute sadism. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, we both said that, you know, the 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 point of this picture is is the tongue, and that that information is in uh, Suzanne's caption as well. But it, it's funny at first glance, you, you you can't be sure that you actually see the tongue first. I mean, what what I see first is the red, um, and then I see the tongue, and then that makes me go, oh. You know that that's the thing that is most um uh, you know yeah yeah just and so we do we do need to get closer so as joe has said whether it was by shooting you know a vertical um, or using a longer focal length because really i think you know we just really need to see you know the horse's head and neck and as a result some of that background will probably be appear less distracting um and you your eye would go straight to the tongue first and then you know start to wander and find the other things that joe has mentioned you know right down to those earplugs uh, so yeah well yeah goes back to that comment your pictures aren't good enough you're not close enough uh, so, <laughs> and this yeah. image i think belongs in a photo essay so that we're seeing yeah yeah sure of yeah. images which is why we picked um your rodeo work uh to mm. to discuss uh very soon. Okay, next image, also by Suzanne. Um, I mean, what fantastic graphics, uh, but mm. the graphics, the lines which make the image also overload the image. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I can yeah. see why you took it as it is. Uh, there's so much to take in, but there's too much to take in. I really like that you have a central focus, a central character, or a cow who is looking at you. I like that you have a bird flying in the background. Um, but I feel that this is too uh, too wide. Um, and, yep, just could have been zoomed in a bit. Also, congrats congrats on cool exposure, <clears throat> including including that sky and the, the wildness of the background. Um um, excuse me, also to go back to the last picture and this one, Suzanne, I really appreciate your captions, the details in the captions, uh, why you were there, what you thought, um, that really brought a lot to the image. Uh, Keith, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, not much to add to that. I mean, they're the, they're the main points. It's one of those situations where, you know, you're drawn to a scene because of, you, you know, these graphic uh, details that, you um, probably directed Suzanne's eye to to the scene in the first place but then yeah you have to decide well this isn't the subject the subject is still the cows and so I've still got to you know again it goes back to what I was saying about you know what am I looking at what do I want the viewer to look at and you know 
the viewer should still be, you know, that cow in the center should still be the primary uh, uh, part of attraction and where we should go and not be distracted by the green bars as, as you know, incredibly graphic, uh, graphically appealing as they might be. So yeah, it's, I'm wanting to zoom in. I'm wanting to get close, but yeah, even further, I would go even further actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I did this crop and I wasn't convinced. I like, I almost like this better. Yeah, so you, have you, to got, go you, you got, in, the, then... you got the fluorescent lights, you know, which are running parallel above as well, which also help to frame the image within the image. Over to uh, Tom Willard, Tom who Willard. is our resident poet. Uh, Tom wrote at length, I hope he's here, I hope he sees this, about the images that he submitted in, in a really poetic manner. And I, I'm grateful for that. Um, you know, I almost looked past and over this image because I felt like I'd seen it before and that the lighting was too hot, but I'm wrong about the lighting being too hot. All of the mm. details are there. Um, if there's any blowout, it's it's not worth mentioning. Uh, you did get the light, the the details in the background as well in the shadows, all of those feathers and the muck. It's really good. And then what Tom uh, said, which really brought this to life for me, um, is that the wings are spread almost as though in flight. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow, you're so you're so right. And I, I gave it a closer look and I looked at the elegance of it, the simplicity of the image. Mm. And of course, this classic, you know, burned belly because they're in ammonia all the time. And I I grew to really, really appreciate this image quite a lot. Mm. I wish I could read you everything he wrote, but uh, but we can't. It grows think, on you, this image. I mean, it's quite simple, isn't it? It's just but that, I think that's its appeal. It's beautifully simple. And, you know, and with great lighting you know that's classic side edge lighting theatrical lighting lighting that you get in theaters and um it I, I really like it this is the simplicity and i think i you know in my notes i wrote that you know it's it's almost like a crime scene photograph yeah you know here's the victim on the ground and if i was to lift up the bird afterwards to take it away to the mortuary um i would expect to see a chalk line uh, on the ground that has been left by the detectives you know it's that sort of it's that type of theatrical dramatic picture and yet yeah. it is very simple in its um exposure and, and framing uh someone mentioned the caving in the chest yeah, yeah that that really that intrigued me as well you know so that that adds a little bit of mystery um to it as well and um, one comment I, I wondered about, one question I had is, Tom, did you shoot this from farther back, uh, almost as far back as you could without getting your shoes in the picture? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I might also be nice with a lot more space around. I'm not sure it would make the image better, but it's a question that I had about framing. Now onto a, a picture that Keith and I have, have disagreed about, and I'll let Keith go first. Um, <laughs> Ava and Vic, maybe you want to post uh, the caption in in the comments as well. Um, Tom, Tom is very attached to his image. I find like he he looks at them and he thinks about them and he writes poetry about them. And uh, I really, really like really this. I, I I I I really like this. I think he's he's really pushed um, pushed the envelope. Uh, you know, creatively here because yeah. you know he's he's the 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 key part of this picture is the eye right and um and it's all the emotion is there all the power is just in that eye and yet it's such a small detail of the photograph and it's so close to to the edges of of you know i, th I think that's a, what, a, a corral fence or something above it and the you know the body of of uh, of a of another cow um just below and you know another few millimeters one way or the other and he would have lost that but as a result you know look at the diagonals that are in that picture and the diagonals that are framing that eye and there's this great highlight coming off the eye and there's you know and the muzzle is bright and dribbling and there's you know and there's the col the color of that metal that sort of clinical surgical green it's just there's so much um to me in this picture in terms of 
the composition, the lighting, the color, which just says to me, uh oh, something's something bad is about to happen. And you know, if you wanted to use this as an opener, you know, it's it's it, you know, pictures aren't just for posting on Instagram and hanging on the wall. You know, they're also for publication. And being a, an editor, and I wanted an opener about whatever the story is here that in the following pages, I know exactly where I can put my heading or even just a caption without intruding on the power of this photograph. <laughs> that was brilliant. I loved, I loved hearing that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just having a hard time getting into the image. It's like an almost image for me. I would have overlooked it. Um, the eye is an almost. Um, something I, I like about photojournalism is that you can get a really off the cuff full of movement, almost image, but it's still a great image. Uh, mm. Keith sees a lot in it and, and believes it to be that. Um, you know, sometimes you have a photojournalistic image that's totally out of focus, but you've captured this one little thing that really stands exactly. out. Exactly, yeah. Um, like to me, I see, I see faults. I see like you didn't get in enough. Uh, the eye's not quite there. You've got this distracting, distracting cow. But then when I hear Keith talk about it, I'm like, I think I'm starting to fall in love with this picture quite right um, you should be yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh and i will leave it at that for the sake of time i have a lot more to say about this but i i just loved what uh what what keith has brought to it for me and hopefully for you guys as well this is by adam oswell um sorry i don't know how to get rid of this oh what is that uh, da, da, da. keith go ahead Ooh! oh no <laughs> Keith, oh no, okay, go ahead with this image. I'll get back to okay, you. Okay, um, yeah. right, there. Oh, that's okay, you got rid of whatever it was. Okay, what we see here is uh, Adam, uh, I know, we've, we've talked, and, um, you know, he's a he's a, an Australian like myself, but a very tall one. Um, and Adam, I think that's, that's the problem here. You haven't crouched down to the eye level of the girl. You And... Um, I, I can just, you know, this had all the makings of uh, the, the situation, the girl holding the bat by the wings between her own hands. And to me, this just, uh, the situation means, oh, look, got to get down to her level, hold the bat up in front of the camera, let me see the eyes of that girl. Um, okay, that means you are, in effect, uh, creating this image, directing this, the, 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 this image. But I think this is one of those situations that would have demanded it, and as a result, it would have been, a, you know, you would have had a, a very powerful um, photograph um, that would be more engaging. At the moment, I, I feel like someone who is being voyeuristic in that I'm, I'm noticing this, this scene and I'm looking down, um, but she doesn't know that I'm looking at her. And I, whereas I think, and so as a result, there's no engagement, unfortunately. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's an opportunity missed. So Adam's working on a big project now. He's bringing a lot of elements into this story from climate change, globalization, destruction of nature, animal welfare, viruses. Um, you know, it's the kind of story that's going oh, to yeah. get picked up. Um, Absolutely. It's covering a lot of ground. To this image, like, I think it's a good image. I think it's a good image. But I can see where it could be uh, be stronger. I like uh, one of the details I really like is the pinched whiteness of the fingers which makes me have a lot of empathy for the animal. I don't know if the animal is dead or alive. I would like to know. I'd like yeah, to see a bit of point. shift in angle, as Keith has said. I like that it addresses the playfulness of children, which is so common. Um, you know, we don't realize we're not taught how to treat others. And this image is a testament to that. You can't hate this child. Um, what a beautiful, young, sweet child she is. And yet uh, we're just, it, to me, it speaks to like what we're teaching and not teaching. Um, I think it's a good image. I don't think it's a great image, but we go on to Adam's uh, second mm. submission here, uh, which has just a number of gorgeous elements. Uh, Keith, why don't you go ahead? And this is from the same story. Yeah, this, yeah, I, I really like this one. Um, I think, again, it's, it, it, it's about, it's such a placid scene, you know, it could be a travel mm -hmm. photograph, you know, if you just looked at it at first, um, because the water is calm, the, the man there, you know, he's just, you know, just the angles of his, of his limbs, the arms, the legs, it, it's creating, you know, a dynamic, you're following his hand, 
up, you know, basically from his head down, his arm to his hand, or the other way around. You know, it depends on how you're you're navigating the photograph. But then you notice, you you, you know, you see that uh, he's what he has there is, um, you know, and, and then of course the net. You know, he's obviously putting um, what he's caught from the net onto you know onto the boat. So suddenly, what might seem like a you know a, a pleasant scene something that's quite placid and almost serene and not um there has a has a from the animal's point of view you know more sinister outcome to it so um and the color palette's nice you know a study in blues and greens so and i can see the sun setting in the background so it's um yeah it's taken in the last light of the day so which is very calming as well in itself so it's a calm scene but there's a, but it's deceptive that's mm -hmm. what i like about it yeah i find that it's like a classic culture and travel photography type image mm. uh, i won't repeat what keith has said i agree the hand is very striking it's such a gentle gesture towards you know this entrapment hunting and death um i also like the uh placement how we see the web of the net like the yeah. man as well is entrapped in a system that has been and needs to change uh for everyone's health and especially that of the animals now we are running out of time i'm going to go right to our stories we have we counted we included three stories um we're gonna have to do this quickly and guys uh this is our first critique um now we're getting an experience in real time of like how quickly it goes and uh, how we'll make adjustments <laughs> next time. And I think what we'll do is we'll take, oops, we'll take some of these um, stories and include them in our next uh, critique because we don't want to go through them quickly. Uh, thank you for everyone who submitted the singles. It was such a pleasure to look at and analyze them. I, I'm enjoying the positive comments in the sec comment section as well. Now. Um, Keith, while I get organized, do you want to uh, introduce this story? And I will scroll through once or twice the uh, sure, images. Sure. Yeah, this is, um, you saw earlier, one of the pictures um, which uh, about the story, which is the slaughterhouse in Thailand. And uh, this is the set of pictures. And some of these pictures are, are also in hidden, uh, that one in front of us right now. And so it's, it tells a very complete story, the whole um you know, from start to finish, what happens to to the pigs and how they're slaughtered? Um, pretty gruesome, um, but also and, and very graphic. Uh, so it's, but you can see here in in this set of pictures how Andrew is. You know, this is terrific in that you know a very grisly situation. But what I said earlier about you know artistry and using color and uh, graphical lines uh to really make the picture stronger and more imposing upon upon the viewer uh andrew's exploited that here as well uh, you know there is uh in this last picture um you see there's a gold ribbon around the the stomach of the the lucky survivor the one pig that's being picked out to be reprieved from uh from having its uh it's yeah. throat cut like the others um but you know I, I suppose if there's you know i it's a very strong set of pictures not just because of the subject matter but because of the way andrew has actually photographed it you know he, he, it does tell the story from start to finish um mm -hmm. i mean this one i mean i mean funnily enough i think of the set the first one here and the last one are probably i'm not saying they're, they're they're poor pictures but they're compared to the others they're probably the weaker pictures and i think that's um if we go back to the first one joe um i think we're, we're they're all i think it's almost like we're trying to say too much here you know this is the pigs arriving at the slaughterhouse and you and there's two guys on the top there and they're obviously opening the cages and the pigs are going off down uh, down the left there but in a way, I think, you know, there's some distracting elements. Obviously, there's the power lines. There's that truck in the background, which, and I think, personally, you know, you could have just focused just on the two guys and the pigs in the cages immediately beneath their feet um, and uh, without 
having to try and tell the whole story of what's happening in this particular scene. You know, it's, it's remember, there's, there's no harm in letting the viewer work out some of the story. You know, there's, if you're giving them enough information in the picture, as well as maybe a supporting caption, they can work out, oh, the pig, this is the pigs being unloaded uh, without actually showing it completely because then it becomes all too busy and you don't know what you should be looking at first. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in and say yeah, sorry. that yeah. part of this story for Andrew is the, the lives of these workers. Mm. Um, their families live on the slaughterhouse premises and that is extraordinary. Yeah. I would like to know more about them. And of course we have that image of the little girl from the singles that we started off yeah. with an hour ago. Um, it's a key image in this series, but you know, we we get an idea of their day, the grueling work. Uh, I'm gonna and like look at this, like this is you know, we really get a sense of their day, but who are they? You know, they mm. live there. I want to know about that. I want to see the families, I want to see where they live. Um, this is an interesting picture, but I'd like to see actually the opposite of this. I would like to see portraits. Um, of these people looking at the camera, maybe taking mm. them to the side and like, you know, you know, look at me and, and yeah. thank you yeah. and who are you and tell me something interesting. Um, I like that this picture literally erases the identity of the person. I think that's very interesting and workers' identities and lives are often erased in these stories. Um, so this is like a great analogy uh, metaphor. It is. It and is. yet I want to see yeah. the absolute opposite included in uh, in this story. Um, on to the next picture. Keith, you said this was the strongest of the yes, lot? Yes, absolutely. I, I, it's just the timing of it and the balance. Uh, as you know, it's almost, you know, like you, Joe, I've seen a lot of these types of pictures and, um, and you do get to a stage where you sort of, you, you, you almost ignore, um, the things that would horrify most people, which is obviously all the, the dismemberment and the gutting and the carcasses. I look, I look at the, you know, the compositional balance and also, you know, this one, um, and, and that's. To, because in some ways it would be quite easy just to take pictures just for their shock value. And you've somehow, particularly in animal photo journalism, you've got to put that shock value element out of your mind and just look at it as what is making this a good photograph. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and thinking of it as a work of art, it still can be a work of art, even though, you know, as in this shot, what we're seeing is, is you know, bodies that are on, on hooks that have been, you know, completely cut, dismembered, ready to go to, you know, to for sale for for consumption. And um, so, it's a strong set of pictures for those reasons. Andrew has obviously been doing enough of this work to, to be able to let those aesthetical qualities and values still be an important part of his work, and that shows. It really does. And I agree with you, you know, it would be great to get a set of portraits of the workers as well. Mm. Just, you know, because at the end of the day, um, maybe it's debatable, but they're trying to be normal people, particularly if they're refugees trying to live and survive in a new land. Yeah. Uh, question for Ava and Vic and people. Are we OK if we go 10 minutes over? Um, you're welcome to leave if you have to. Like, do we have StreamYard for an extra 10 minutes so that we can go over? Uh, you can drop me a private note uh, as someone just has there. Let's see. I think we could go over. Great. Great to hear. Um, I hope okay. someone can stay an extra 10 minutes. Now, uh, something I want to finish on with this story, I really appreciate. So first of all, they were submitted to us in the order they wanted to be presented. And we're presenting those images to you in this fashion in their fashion. Now, this is a t very classic ending to a photo essay, but Andrew did not end the photo essay with this image. He ended it with this image. And mm. I love that because it's bringing it back to the individual. I think this is yeah. a fantastically clever and compassionate ending to the story. Um, you know, the winning pig who um, you know, who has been spared. And but look at the <laughs> 
I mean, the, the picture really speaks for itself. And Andrew, congratulations for a really nice, nice uh, narrative ending mm. in this fashion. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So next we go to Amy. Amy, uh, I'll scroll through. Uh, Keith, can you tell us about what's going on and what her story is about? This is Amy Jones. She's been shooting for five years and animals for four years. Yeah, this is really about the life and conditions of an intensive dairy farm here in the UK, in Kent, in fact. And there are more of these um, intensive farms. And they're, you know, when you drive around the English countryside, you know, most cows and sheep are out in the pasture, out in the open. But uh, increasingly, there are um, farms that are turning to um, just keeping their cows um, completely indoors, in concrete barns, milking them, impregnating them, etc. And they don't see any grass. And as this picture shows, you know, still injecting them with antibiotics, which, um, frankly, they, they shouldn't be doing. And this is a newborn calf, um, already just know, a couple of days old, already separated from its mother. So, and this, I think this is the last picture in the, in the set. Um, it's yeah. a cow that was, was ill, was distressed. And so it was shot and its body just disposed out the back. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a powerful set of pictures, Amy. I do congratulate you on it. Um, and you know, obviously the lighting, the conditions haven't been favorable to you. Um, you can see how dimly lit it is, but you haven't let that really um, get in the way. Um, and the comments that I, I've got are really very, very small. They're just to do with, you know, maybe getting a little, I mean, this picture shows one of the investigators on the scene. I mean, to be, you know, really blunt, I'm just wondering how necessary is this picture to the set? I, um, I suppose it depends on, on, on the purpose of, of where these pictures are going to be shown and how, who you want to see them. Um, but I do like the way the cow's looking back <laughs> at the photographer, um, or the investigator, I should say, cause you're the photographer, um, as if to say, what do you think you're doing here? You know, don't you realize you could be caught and, um, <laughs> it's, but I, I just love the dim lighting, you know, it's, it, it, that in itself is just telling us that um, what's going on here is sort of not something that the great British public would really approve of. They want to see their cows in green fields and not tied up and shackled in uh, in dark satanic mills. If I can uh, jump in here and start on mm. this image, this is a fantastic image, Amy. Um, I agree with Keith that it may actually not belong in this series um, because you have focused so closely on the details of how they live in these barns. Mm. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, but here we are. It's kind of like th throwing it in. Like, you know, this is an exciting aspect of APJ and what we're doing. But I think this is a standalone image. Yeah. Um, or if you're going to include investigators in the narrative, add two more of those images. Like, and make the narrative about like here we are and this is uh this is what we're doing what yeah. i like very much about this series and i'll just scroll through again is the continuity of color yeah. and lighting yeah. yeah uh this image is less strong um that's okay uh the milk here is really a standout feature of this of this image and so good on you for the the continuity um this image keith and i think give it give us both pause because we i don't think either of us really like the crop um, yeah it should be yeah I'm, I'm wanting to see a bit more beneath the feet of the cows in the foreground there and i yeah. feel there's there's too much above which basically is pretty much empty space i mean i get the scene uh but i just think it was a case where the camera just needed to be just tilted Lowered a little, more. a little bit or yeah. crouched down a bit more. Yeah, and for um, me, not more, like not a lot more. I go to the left yeah. a little bit and a little mm -hmm. lower. I like all yeah. that empty yeah. space. Um, mm. But uh, I, Amy, I'd be curious to see if you uh, did a series from here. Uh, Keith and I both agreed that the focus, we'd want the focus on the the one in the front, like the milking Correct. machine yeah. in the front, yeah. Yeah. not the middle. So Amy, maybe you have uh, one of those images. And also that's the point of these critiques, isn't it? Is to get your work uh, a second pair of eyes, third pair of eyes and um, see things that you're not 
that you're not seeing. Keith, you had some comments about this. Yeah, it's um, I, I when I was looking at these earlier, um, you know, obviously I was trying some crops on my own screen where I think cropping needs improving and it needs to improve the picture. And you know, my my eye keeps bouncing over to the that object on the floor on the right. You know, it's just a uh, it's just a it, as a shape, it's just a a greeny gray rectangle. Um, but it distracts. So I I would. Uh, crop this you know so you could still crop it in, in and keep the same format by cropping off the right and then coming down a bit on the top so uh you're actually well i'm putting sorry i'm putting my hand in front of the camera but you're actually coming down on the top of the bucket there so long as you keep the bottom curve of the bucket and the rim of the bucket at the, at the bottom there uh you could still cut in on the top and that way you're just taking people into the bucket just that little bit closer to what this is about which is the you know the antibiotics that are used and uh uh yeah the bars you know almost bars. a great picture let's see that animal's full face uh he or she uh deserves deserves that and i know it can be hard but i yeah. i bet you you got it um so i'd be curious would, to hear yeah, yeah? I want to see the nose of the calf, you see, you know, that's, that's what that's, I mean, the full face. That's, of the yeah. Calf. That's what my brain is telling me. Yeah. Cause you have, you have a good expression and the eye, the eye, but uh, it's an almost picture. Uh, not to me, not a fully successful image. Um, and this is so interesting. Those greens, like the greens and the reds, the image to me yeah. is very much about the color and where is this cow and why, and the, the dead eye, um, mm. There are a lot of good elements to this, and I like that it's in keeping with the animals in with the inside and the coloration as much as possible. We're outside, so we have different colors. I think it still works, um, but I think it's not a perfect exposure with the darks and the lights. Um, and the is it the eyes in focus, but not the nose. Maybe a different f stop would have made this even better. Maybe the cow being totally centered. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Keith? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with all that. I, I, Sabine's just made a, an interesting comment, which I was thinking of as you're talking, which is the only cow outside is the dead cow. Oh, the first time this poor, this poor cow has seen grass um, is, well, is when it's dead. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it says it all, doesn't it? Uh, and I'm sure that would have been, would have made a great caption. You know, if you can imagine this as a photo story, you know, printed in a magazine. And this is the end story. Um, yeah, that would be the the perfect comment to end on. Um, congratulations, Amy. Good story. Yeah, uh, great story. We're going to finish with Suzanne Goodwin. So we've seen a few of these images already from the singles. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try and wrap this and say goodbye and everything in the next eight minutes. Um, I'm going to scroll through. Keith can do an intro. And uh, I want to say, Suzanne, thanks for your very extended captions. I wish we yeah. could share them all. Yeah. Uh, very thoughtful introduction and writing, good writing about what you were seeing, why you went, why. Excellent. Yeah, well, this is a, a Rodeo in um, BC, British Columbia, on, on actually on Vancouver Island, I think, if I remember correctly. And um, I, I, this is the perfect opener. It really is, you know, for, for an editor like me, you know, uh, this is the perfect start for a picture. You know, I can imagine this being on the opening spread. And as I say, you know, you've got the space there at the bottom uh, for, for putting in heading and, 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 and a bit of text. Um, but then after that, obviously, um, yeah, these are really difficult events to photograph. And I think Very been, difficult. <laughs> yeah, you know, so many bars, so many things getting in the way. You can't harsh really lighting. get, yeah, harsh lighting as, as this picture shows. Uh, so you can't really get, the perfect um position you know so you know uh, full marks to Suzanne for you know making getting around the the obvious obstacles and I I love this one as well you, you, the use of the wide angle and just shot from on high so again it, it you know you, you're seeing the action and then you've you've got a longer lens shot here for the profile of of, of the horses so, um so I can see you know she's used a lot of um she's used a lot of different approaches and um, to try and overcome, obviously, the 
the circumstances that have worked against her. I, I don't envy her. But um, yeah, it's 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 a story that definitely needs covering. And um, you know, I think you know this exposure, especially, is is particularly strong and really good. Yeah, um, rodeos are really hard to shoot because you are you have such limited positioning mm. um you have harsh lighting you have a lot of movement you have a lot of bars to shoot through and you often end up with images that the tourists are shooting you know so yes yeah, we're, we're so. there because we want to capture the experience of the animals tourists are not trying to do that we're trying to do that but you have to shoot a lot and with a long lens to get that and you're going to have just lots of bullshit in the background to to contend with and so rodeos are places where you have to spend a lot of time to get a couple of good images and you certainly succeeded uh here this is this is really lovely i might play with the cropping uh a little bit i might play with the processing um this keith you said something really interesting about everything moving away in the yeah day. this this is this is a scenario that anyone who photographs action you know um is really wants to try and avoid you know you you know if it, uh, whether you're a sports photographer or a, you know animal photojournalism photographer really you want to get in front of the action you know you want to have the action coming towards you this because everything's moving away from the camera here and as a result we're not actually and that means we're not having any engagement you know mm -hmm. we're chasing the action you know there's no eye contact you know um, you know we've got the back of the woman uh we've got the back of the animal um even the, the the people closest to the camera in the crowd that little boy on the left even he's looking away so mm. yeah again you know i'm sure I, i'm not saying i could have done any better i probably wouldn't have but you know this is the sort of situation where somehow you've got to try and find a vantage point that's going to put you in front of the action so that it's everything's going to happen in front of you and you're you're there ready for it and I appreciate that we have this detail, but it's still not a, a, a good enough picture to warrant being in. Uh, you probably had to move around this and that to, to get this image. And I think that it's cropped and I can see you have bars on either side, but um, I would have you know, tried just go really wide or really close or, or, mm. or change your footing there. It's, a, it's more of a like, you know, a document here. They use these things here but not an artistic image. There's a lot going on here that I really yeah. appreciate from the, the spilling of saliva, the obvious stress, this animal is trying to get away. The woman is trying to subdue. We have ropes. Uh, yeah. uh, we, have a, we have a natural background that always strikes me in these places of use and abuse when you have trees in the background. Um, Keith, go ahead. Yeah, this is, um, this is a, a good picture that I would definitely include in the set because you know there's, there's action there's a story going on within this frame and um you know it, so and there's a dynamism there's movement so you a caption probably the a, a caption with this picture would probably just add factual information because you can see what's happening the you know is the cows trying to get out uh, of its uh, corral and uh, the, the woman here um, you know she's using her hat to obviously try and subdue it and calm it down mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's one of these sort of peak action pictures and there was another one that Suzanne had of the the bronking uh, horse uh, further on um, well that's a peak action picture too you know part of me is wondering god what happened next um, so and then this one yeah, that's Sorry. that. Yeah, that's a peak action picture that I was referring to, which I'm sure many of the, you know, the the tourists or the the people, the paying guests or whatever you want to call them, would have taken as well with, you know, with their cameras. And used to promote the rodeo. Frankly, that's a difficult yes. thing. Yes, photographing yes. rodeos, which yeah. begs the question: like, do you want to avoid these images altogether? I think mm. I think maybe you do if you want to make this more photojournalistic and about the animals. Um, yeah, yeah, tough. Uh, Keith and I both really like this image for the wide angle. Mm. Keith, it contradicts a little bit what you said about the action all moving away, and yet, like, yeah, it like, does. Like, but, use of wide yeah. angle. Well, this is where the you know the ultra wide. But she, she's Suzanne here's got herself in a good position. She's right in the central position, and she's elevated, and so this becomes more of a an exercise in in 
graphic qualities and, and geometry and to the point where, you know, the horse on the left and the guy on the right, you know, at the midpoints uh, of the frame are helping to add to it because it's almost like they're pointers, uh, positional pointers to uh, everything that's happening in the middle there. So, you know, there are, you know, you could draw lines from the left, the right, the, the centre, um, go and they'd all meet at, at the centre yeah. of the photograph where all the action's happening, which is terrific, you know. Um, so, and that that's what a wide angle can give you. Um, it can give you that those angles and that depth, which other lenses wouldn't. And then on to, you know, we have a mix of wide and long. Uh, yeah, exactly. Moving yeah. up a little bit, you'd avoid the bar, you'd get the, the animal's ears. Uh, what a great action shot. I think it might be quite beautiful in, in black and white as well. Not that I'm suggesting you put one black and white image amongst a bunch of color. Um, and this, I don't know, it's an almost shot for me. Uh, I like how much is going on, but yes, I, I, th I think I would prefer seeing the full face of the animal. The um, eye of the horse is very powerful there, though, isn't it? You know, the yeah. white of the eye, it's it dominates, even though, you know, it's such a small element of the scene. I like so, the chaos. Yeah. Um, I also, similarly, I prefer this image. If you had to whittle down this this essay, mm. I would pick this one, because look at the cigarette and the holding of the hair, exactly. and the animal looking out to, to what's happening, the ears back. This like this this utter domination that we see here, I, I quite like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna let people look at this uh, all the way through one more time, and um, I I will say that there's so much action and movement, except for this one. I I almost wish for some moments of repose. Uh, so where are they? Uh, where do the where do we get that? That might be a challenge for you, um, Suzanne, in your next rodeo shoot is where do you find images that are different from these um, shot vertically or more portrait like or um, yeah, to bring a little bit something a little bit more dynamic and behind the scenes to the story. Um, I'd bring a hacksaw to try and cut away some of those bars, but you know, you'd probably get arrested for that, wouldn't you? That but, is a perfect, perfect way to end this uh this <laughs> hour and 40 minute critique. We've gone really hard. Um, I know that next time we'll just simply have to uh whittle down the number of, of images we look at. Um yeah, and uh and, and we kind of knew that, but I was just so excited to, to because of all the submissions and uh, I wanted to get it to as many of you as possible. Keith, thank you for your amazing insight into, uh, into these My photos and stories. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, it was great to see um, so many people participating, sending in the pictures and, uh, and, you know, so many different stories as well and from different parts of the world. That's, that's the other interesting thing i think um so you know i just hope um yeah everything that i've said well maybe not everything but at least something that i've said has uh, resonated with you and uh will prove helpful next time uh you you go out and um do your do your thing so you know keep at it yeah definitely thanks. Thank you for being animal photojournalists. Thank you yeah, uh, for wanting to be here to learn. And I've learned as well when I give critiques, uh, you know, that helps me with my own work as well. Uh, I'm seeing all the thank yous come in and, and uh, the team's publishing some of them. Uh, that's great because that means the public, uh, when we make this live, will be able to see those as well. Uh, I think it's been enriching and uh, I've learned a lot. And I guess we will we will sign off now. And, um, and we we will meet again, as I say. I hope <laughs> we will we will meet again and uh, continue to be out there fighting the good fight and shooting these excellent stories. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Good night from London. <laughs> <laughs>